Hi, in this video, we want to take a look at model selection and supervised learning. Okay, so in this stage of the game, we've already got our data, done our data prep, done our initial analysis, you know, did our, you know, profile plots, you know, did a whole bunch of plots, a whole bunch of analysis of our target variable. And we, you know, we've got everything all together. And, you know, we've done some preliminary exploration of models. And we've got an idea of which models we want to use. And now we actually want to make a decision and say, this is the model I'm going to use. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to have several model structures that I'm going to try. I'm going to do some parameter tuning on those model structures. And then I'm going to take the best model or models that I can find. All right, so this is you know late in the game. And uh, you know after we make this decision, we're going to be moving into production with the model that we choose. We're going to have multiple candidates that we need to choose from. And we're going to be using the train validation test split paradigm to make a decision on which model is best. Remember, the train data is the data I build my models on. The validation data is what I use for deciding which model to pick after I've done my parameter tuning. And then my test set is my honest estimate data for checking to see which how, how is my model going to perform in the future. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do after I've done my data prep is going to be to partition the data into train validation and tests. And so, uh, of the, you know, I'm gonna have those three subsets on there. And so here I'm loading my data and in this part of the code, I'm gonna go ahead and do that partition split. Here I'm doing it by random selection. You know, there are other methods that we could use. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna train multiple models. Now, in this phase, I'm just like just looking at different model structures to consider. And it, it, so let's say I'm working on something and a package doesn't work for me, or a model structure just doesn't really work well with my data. I get a lot of errors. This stage of the game, I just kick it out. I don't worry about it. I bounce to another type of model and I just keep building models until I feel like I get one that's uh, you know reasonable. All right, so here, how I'm gonna do this is I went through, I, I thought, you know, what are the major types of models that we could go with? Well, there's gonna be regression. So here I've got, you know, forward selection, backwards elimination, and stepwise forward back for linear regression. I've got regular old standard vanilla linear regression. And then we have, uh, you know, regulated uh, linear regression. Here I'm doing support vectors. And I thought about the tree model, so I've got, two types of decision trees that I'm considering, stochastic gradient boosting and the ranger implementation of random forest, two types of K nearest neighbors, and then I'll go ahead and use InNet. Uh, I thought about using neural net also, which is a, a major implementation of neural networks in R, but on my machine within Carrot, I got a lot of errors and like I would do in real life, if I'm getting a bunch of errors and I have, you know, decent models coming up in other model structures, I'm just going to go with those other model structures. I'm not going to, you know, spend a lot of time trying to trying to force things through unless maybe my stakeholders want a particular model or my boss or, you know, maybe there's been a precedent established in my organization of using a particular model structure. In that situation, I'll go all in to get to, to work. But my point of view for most projects, you know, and in my experience is nobody really cares what the model structure is they care about the results and my job is just, just to deliver a good model not adhere to some preconceived notion all right and so to make my life easy i went ahead and worked with these model structures within, within the train function of the carrot package and this is a really easy way to you know fit models and to uh, do like some quick and easy parameter tuning to get like just reasonable values down for my parameters. And so the caret function or the caret package train function, I have to specify my predictor data frame and my target variable as a vector. You, so here you'll notice that all these functions in dplyr r result in a data frame or a tibble, actually technically a tibble, but 
you know, think data frame. And here, the pull function is I'm pulling an individual vector off of the data frame that's passed in. And so, you know, this is nice. And you'll notice that I'm using only the training data to build my model. And then I'm using the LApply function to get a faster version of a for loop going. And then when I get this, it's going to give, going to put out that. It's going to put this output into a list, and I'm going to name that list the vectors I iterated over. You know, that's a nice way to go. Now, something that was kind of a pain, and this is something that, that's kind of a drawback of the train function, is that individual parameters, uh, you know, need to be specified off of this. This, this is still an excellent way to start out and get going, but I couldn't put lin out into the into this like for loop. It's not technically a for loop, but it's similar to it. I couldn't put lin out into a model that doesn't have the lin out as a parameter value. And so I had to redo my in net, which is technically redundant, not super efficient, but it's not that big of a deal. Without this, what's going to end up happening is that the model is going to try to fit a, a logistic regression model. And that just doesn't make sense for house prices. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look and see how do my models perform. And so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna look at the root mean squared error for my training data. I'm gonna look at the root mean squared error of my validation data. I'm gonna look at the root mean squared uh, error of my test data. All right, the validation data is how I'm going to choose my, my model. Now, I'm going to check the training statistic as a, a double check on model performance, but also if there's a big gap, if training is much better than validation, then that's a sign I have overfitting. So I, I have this way to double check to make sure that I'm not grossly overfitting. And then after I select my model off of validation, I use the test data to get an honest estimate of how the model will perform in real life. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So if I'm going to need to check the root mean squared error. I chose to go through and manually do uh, the residuals and do the computations that way. And so here I'm getting the predictions. Once again, I'm using L apply to do that fast loop in R. I just use the predict function to get the predictions. And then I put them together into a uh, into a data frame using dplyr's bind columns. So I'm treat treating each of the prediction vectors as a column in my data frame. And here on this step is how I name that data frame very nicely, the list and the data frame at the same shot. All right, so now I've got a matrix of the predict predictions. And now I'm going to compute the residuals. On this step, I'm going to go through, I'm actually going to iterate in, in a formal for loop and just subtract off to get the residuals. I like to define my residuals as predicted minus target. That way, when I see something positive, I know that the prediction was too big. I see something negative. I know the prediction was too small. All right. And so now let's go ahead and you know set this up for us to be able to take a look at the models. And so here I'm just doing uh, I'm, I'm just doing some you know reformatting of what's going on, and I'm doing the computations of the root mean squared error. Here I am just setting it up so that I have the, the models in the order by their average root mean squared error, and then down here I'm setting it up so that uh, train validation tests are in that order. So let's take a look at what happens. All right, so now here we can see that on my validation data, Ranger was the best performance. By the way, I, I wrote this code and I went through several iterations of this by working through. There are, there are like uh, random number generation involved in this. There are, um, you know, so like the partitioning is random number generated. And some of these models use random number generation. And so if you rerun this code, you're going to get a slightly different list, but there'll be at least similar values. Uh, but just be aware of that. All right. So validation, we see that ranger, then support vectors, then stochastic gradient boosting, k nearest neighbors, 
lasso, elastic net ridge, linear models, neural nets, canier savers, then the forward and back selections. Uh, then the individual tree models did the worst on, according to validation. All right, so the, you know that gives me you know an idea of what's going on. And you'll notice that you know really these are all pretty tight with each other. All of these are actually you know pretty decent models. If you if you know K nearest neighbor, the K N N is the you know is the lowest of the ones that I highlighted. But um, looking at that, you know there, I mean there is a bit of a difference, but I mean it's it's super small. All these models will be reasonable to actually use in production, in my opinion. Now, something I want to check at this point is I want to check, you know, what's the difference between training and validation? If training is, you know, significantly smaller than validation, that's a sign of overfitting. That doesn't mean that's the it's the worst model, though. I just know that I'm starting to detect features in the training data that's not in the overall population. And that's a risk with the Ranger model right here. So Ranger did the best on the validation model, on validation data, but it also did the best on the training data. And there's a bit of a gap. You know, the, the training root mean squared error is less than half. Okay, so I know I've got some overfitting. That doesn't mean I wouldn't put this into production. It just, I just know that I've gone into that realm of overfitting. And there, you know, there, there, there's a difference between my training data that was detected by my, my by the algorithm and you know we, we can look through in a lot of times i go ahead and subtract the difference of the two and you know when we look at the test set you know the ones that i highlighted are all pretty tight actually you know i'll go ahead and cut off oh yeah we can, like k nearest neighbor through ranger all did pretty similarly on the test set so you know once again i that's confirming that you know things all these will be reasonable to go with. Now let's visualize this. So, you know, visually, the validation is the one that we want to look at first. We can see that, you know, Ranger, support vectors, stochastic gradient boosting, you know, K nearest neighbors, you know, the uh, regulated, you know, linear regression, regular linear regression, neural nets, you know, these all did, you know, really tight. You know, there, there really isn't like a bad one in the batch. There is, it looks like I do have some overfitting going on over here. And over here, you know, my test sets on the on the ones that I'm considering are all pretty tight. So, you know, feeling good. Now, what I would do next, so you notice I just basically just dumped the model in and I ran I ran things with default settings. In real life, I'm gonna get my model structure down to like a, to a short list. And then I'm going to start like, you know, doing further fine tuning, see if I can, you know, re reduce that root mean squared error significantly, see if I can get like a, a, a clear winner of the models. And let's go ahead and do that. Now, this list, when I ran this previously, support vector machines was the best and ENet was the worst of these five sub models. We can see that things have shuffled around a little bit. Uh, Ranger is now the you know the best by uh by this list the support vectors stochastic gradient boosting can you so you know a little bit of a difference but you know these are all you know decent models and so now what i would do uh, on a real life project is i would go through and i would start fine tuning these models you know to a much greater extent i've got it down to a short list so you know i don't want to spend a lot of time you know, fine tuning a model structure that isn't going to be the best anyway. So I get down to a short list and I'm going to com commit more time and effort to getting these models to be good models. And so, uh, you know, I'm showing this here, uh, increasing the tune length. In reality, I would go a much higher value. I would actually do my final parameter tuning overnight, hit the run button, come back in the morning is how I normally do this. And now I'm going to do exactly what I did before. Um, but now I'm taking the improved parameter tuning to see if I can get, you know, a better model going. And so now we can see that support vector machine yeah, has the best validation. And ENet is pretty close. Oh, actually, though, GBM is the best. I misspoke. Yeah, so, you know, we have, I, I had it reversed. 
uh, GBM, then Ranger, Lasso, and, and so on. Now, we can see once again, we do see a gap between training and validation. That doesn't mean I don't, you know, that doesn't mean I don't launch the model. I need to just be aware of it. You know, looking here, it might be that I might feel more comfortable with ENET because the training statistic doesn't look so optimistic. And here's a bar plot of it. And we can see that things are pretty tight, pretty close with each other. You know, you can see that, you know, this decrease in these bars, you know, gives us an idea of how much of overfitting I've got going on. So it's like the best model I'll go through. Like, honestly, I probably, I, I, I like Ranger a lot, but for, you know, from the previous runs I had of this and what, and what I'm seeing here, I would lean towards support vector machine or possibly lasso for this particular data set. Oh, and here, when I put it into production, this is the root mean squared error that I would anticipate seeing. If I start seeing like results when it's in production that are worse than these values, then that's a sign that there's been like a change between the relationship between my predictor variables and my target variables, or possibly, you know, data drift, maybe, um, you know, the distribution of my predictor variables has shifted to the population, the subpopulations where my model performs worse. And so, you know, something I would be doing after my model gets into production, and I'll talk about ways of monitoring in another video, is that we want to monitor and make sure we know what's going on. If my results are significantly worse than the test statistic that I had when I was training my model, I know that something has gone wrong. And, you know, if I know something about it, I can at least, you know, address it. Hopefully we don't get into that position but it's better to know about it and do something about it than let just, you know, be blind and let, you know, things go off the rails. All right. So for your homework, go through, train at least five models on the same train validation and test data, tune your parameters, evaluate the test statistics, and select your best model. That's all I've got for you. Life is short. Do math.